Hi everyone and welcome to our projectile motion exercise video. Projectile motion doesn't so much rely on your understanding of forces. It more relies on you being able to use your motion formulae correctly. I'll write them down in the top left uh, just so we don't forget. So we have V equals U plus AT. Displacement S is equal to a half U plus V times T. Displacement is equal to UT plus a half AT squared and V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. If you don't know what V, U, A, T and S stand for, please go check out the theory videos. So here's the basics of projectile motion. Say we have a ball fired out of a cannon. Picture top left here. The ball's path, most people know intuitively, will start out horizontally but then we'll drop down like that at a steeper and steeper angle. What's going on here is that as the ball comes out of the cannon, it's only got horizontal velocity there. But as more time passes and this ball curves through its path, gravity is acting on the ball. If there were no gravity, the ball would shoot off like that. Doesn't happen on Earth. But since gravity is acting on the ball, gravity starts to give that cannonball a little bit of vertical velocity. It does not affect the horizontal velocity there. So look at those two arrows. The yellow arrow has not changed in size. So the ball is still moving to the right at the same speed. But the ball is now, so, now also moving down at some velocity. If we add those two vectors together, we get something like that there, which shows the real direction the ball is traveling. And finally, as the ball become, moves closer and closer to the ground, even though the horizontal velocity again has not changed, the vertical velocity has increased in the downwards direction. So that pink arrow is getting greater. That's why the ball uh, gets like moves in a steeper and steeper direction as it goes down. That green arrow there is steeper than that green arrow there. So fundamentals aside, let's start putting in a few values. We have a ball coming out of the cannon at a height of 20 meters. So I'll mark that in. 20 meters, that's the height of the ball we'll say. With an initial velocity to the right of 200 meters per second. So that is the initial velocity in the horizontal direction. Three que questions we want to answer. Number one, what is the time of the flight? So the time uh, when the ball leaves the cannon until the time the ball hits the ground. Two, what is the maximum horizontal displacement uh, known as the range? So what is the max displacement to the right, assuming that the ground, actually we'll say it's the water, we'll say it's the water. The water is at that level there, the, the zero meter level and the cannonballs at the 20 meter level. And thirdly, let's find the landing speed of the cannonball. So if the cannonball starts out with 200 uh, meters per second of horizontal velocity, and when it lands it still has that same horizontal velocity, but it also has some vertical velocity, we expect the speed of the cannonball to be greater over here than over here. Uh, the same thing would apply if you threw a snowball from the second floor of a hotel, you would expect it to be traveling faster when it hit the ground than when it left your hand. So first of all, the time of this flight. Ignoring all horizontal motion for the moment. If we just focus on vertical motion here, what we know is this ball is being acted on by the force of gravity there and it's accelerating the ball down at 10 meters per second squared. The ball also has to cover a distance of 20 meters and its initial vertical velocity is zero meters per second. Don't get confused, I'm not saying it has zero speed. It certainly has 200 meters per second of speed. But as it leaves the cannon, 
it has no velocity in the vertical direction. So I can say u equals 0, v is a mystery, and t is a mystery. So ignoring horizontal uh, velocity for a second, what we're looking at is a ball that leaves the cannon and then drops down like that to the ground. If we were to have another cannonball sitting just to the left of this cannon, whoops, I don't want to undo that much, and we were to drop it at exactly the same time that this ball left the cannon, then this cannonball would strike the ground over here at the same time that this cannonball struck the ground over here. So the behavior in the vertical direction does not change uh, in, in this case because there's no air resistance uh, based on how much horizontal velocity it has. Just ignore the horizontal velocity altogether. So what we're really finding is how long it takes a ball dropped from a height of 20 meters to, f uh, to reach the ground if it's accelerating at 10 meters a second squared with initial velocity of zero. Let's use this formula over here. So S is equal to ut plus half at squared. First thing, u equals zero. So this term goes to zero there, u and t. So S is equal to a half at squared. Let's try and get t by itself. 2s over a equals t squared. So the square root of 2s over a is equal to t. And the square root of 2 times 20 all over 10 is equal to the square root of 4, 40 over 10, which equals 2. So this cannonball takes 2 seconds to drop down to the ground over there. So the time of flight is equal to 2 seconds. Now we can figure out the range, the maximum horizontal displacement of that cannonball. I've been saying from the start of the video, the horizontal velocity of the cannonball does not change. So all throughout its journey, the cannonball is traveling to the right at 200 meters per second. If we know it's traveling to the right at 200 meters per second, and we know it flies for two seconds, then the total displacement, S is equal to VT, since there's no acceleration in the horizontal direction, Acceleration zero, that term gets cancelled out. So S equals VT. S is equal to 200 times 2, or 400 metres. So in two seconds, this cannonball travels that way, 400 metres. So max displacement, 400. The third part of this question, finding the landing speed. Let's draw that cannonball again right before it strikes the ground. Horizontal velocity does not change under the effects of gravity, so it's still 200. And we also said it has some vertical velocity there. I'm actually going to move this up uh, in case it starts going off the screen, so I'll move that up there. Just pretend it's down below. Let's figure out how much vertical velocity gravity has given this cannonball by the time it hits the ground using v squared equals u squared plus 2as. So talking only vertically now. v squared is equal to u squared plus 2as. v squared is equal to, well u equals 0 vertically, plus 2 vertically, we have an acceleration of 10 in that direction, and the displacement is 20 meters. So v squared equals 20 times 20, so v is equal to 20. So there's 200 meters per second velocity that way and 20 meters per second velocity downwards. If we want to find the landing speed, we have to find the length of that green arrow there that's made up of the other two vectors. Let's use Pythagoras. We can move this vector over here. So we have a triangle, size 200 there, 20 there, and mystery there. Let's say speed squared is equal to 200 squared plus 20 squared. That's just Pythagoras, the speed being the length of that green arrow there, which is equal to speed 
200 squared plus 20 squared. The square root, no, which is equal to 40,400. So the speed must be equal to the square root of that, which is equal to around about 201 meters per second. So as it lands, it's gained an additional one meter per second to its speed. There'll be some more difficult projectile motions coming up, including questions where uh, we have a, a, an object launched from ground height, but at a slant like that. And we may even do an object launched off a cliff at a slant to a lower surface, this being the most difficult type of question.